Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Without you, I can't do nothing. Without you, there's no life to me. So I need you in my life. I need. The higher you rise in grace, the more you will see your need for Him. The more He anoints you, the more He opens you up to revelations. The more you see the grace of God. It's grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. It's grace, your grace shines on me. It's your grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. It's your grace, your grace shines on me. Shines on me, shines on me. I'm everything with you. Shines on me, shines on me, shines on me. Shines on me, your grace. Your grace, it shines on me. It's your grace, your grace shines on me. Many of you don't know why I worship him. Listen, I have seen ministers struggle in ministry. I've seen people fast and pray and do everything they know to see miracles in their lives. I've seen people go for seminars, sow seed, trying to look for a congregation of even 100 people. I've seen pastors struggle. I know people who are more spiritual than me, they have fallen with all kinds of scandals. I know people who are married, yet they have been victims of all kinds of things. At the height of ministry, they just fall like a leaf. I know people who used to be at the forefront of the agenda of God and now they are out of sync with the Spirit. 
It's your grace. Your grace. I'm nothing without you. It's your grace. Your grace shines on me. Shines on me. Shines on me. I'm everything with you. Shines on me. Shines on me. Shines on me. Blessed be your name. The one who can take a man from anywhere and make him a wonder. If it were based on qualification, some of us would not be in ministry. If it were based on who knows what and who can connect to who. If it were based on fasting and prayer, some of us will not be in ministry. Thank you. I forget not your benefits. You are faithful. You have kept your word and I count you faithful. This is why I will serve you for the days of my life. With my mouth will I make it known From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will preach of the mercies of the Lord I will teach on the kingdom of the Lord I will teach on the spirit of the Lord He's the Holy Ghost the spirit of the living God You're the Holy Ghost scepter of the King of Kings You're the Holy of the age to come you're building everything in obedience to Christ you are the fire in me you are the power at work in me you are my ever-present helper holy spirit i adore he is this fire in me the mighty power at work in me he is my present helper, Holy Spirit, I adore. Is the person behind the miracles, the healings, the transformations? Is the person behind this crowd the mighty one of Israel? The invisible one whose presence cannot be denied. You can see a man of God, but there is a God behind that man. Sunan shi yesu, wanda ya fidu kan sunaye. Sunan shi yesu. Wanda fidu kan sunaye Sunansi Yesu Wanda ya fidu kan sunaye Sunansi Yesu The name that is above Joshua Selman hmm. Sunansi Yesu 
One day I feed you can soon I soon and she yes. One day I feel I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. This is what brings the power. One day I feed you can soon I soon and she yes. One day I feed you can soon I yes. Aribiti Arabata Hey la topiju Aribiti Arabata Hey la topiju Oluwa Oluwa Hey la topiju Go ahead and just appreciate him very silent. Tell him, Lord, I see what you are doing in my life. Thank you. The one who has made me what I am today. The one responsible for every sign and every wonder. These are not the works of men. <laughs> My own God. God of wonders, the hand that moves us in a mighty way. Aribiti, Arabata, Some of you have become too big to worship God. Ha. The journey is still far. Some of you have become so dignified. You have now come to a realization that you are beautiful. You have now discovered you are anointed. It doesn't hear your voice again. It doesn't see your tears again. Mm. Yes, Lord. I tell you, this is the secret of power, authentic spiritual power. Just express your worship to Him in one minute. This is part of the meeting you are being made. Yes, Lord. Thank you. May we never get too blessed to worship you. May we never get too anointed to worship you. May we never get too rich to worship you. May we never get too beautiful and handsome that we cannot cast our golden crown before you. For we are dust. There is nothing in us. Anything called greatness is on account of your faithfulness. Worship him honestly.
get the anointing. If you can be stupid enough, crazy enough in his presence. Hallelujah. See, can I tell you something? There are certain people God can never trust with certain levels of the anointing. They are too big. God needs people that can, can cry, can lie down. They don't care. Some of you have suddenly realized you have anointing. Now you have ministry, you have church. Ah, where is the God that took us when we were nothing? Where is the God that brought us? If I used to cry and lie down years ago, what will suddenly happen that I cannot lie down again? What kind of honor? What kind of wealth? If you can be foolish enough, foolish enough to remember where he brought you, this is the secret of authentic power. May we never get so blessed that we will feel ashamed. May we never get too jaded. May you not travel abroad so much that God becomes your boy. May you never step into a level of honor that will make your heart ashamed, not in his presence. If I do not kneel down, in his presence where else will i kneel down if i do not cry in his presence where else will i cry to men who cannot help me i was nothing when you found me i had no iota of grace when you blessed me no man knew my name no man desired me see what you have made out of my life today i will worship you let everyone know that you are the only one. Let everyone know you are the secret, the mystery behind Koinonia. Let everyone know you are the mystery. Let everyone know this inexplainable anointing, this provoking, said challenging demonstration of the Spirit is a product of your mercy and your grace. see Joshua Selman oh God that behind this mighty testimonies are miracles may men not see Joshua Selman may they see a God that is bigger than this child of you outside I hope you are participating in the worship You are 
the treasure that I see. You are my only one. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Seeking you as some precious drug. You are my only one. Sing Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, you are the man. Lord, I remain a child in your presence. I don't care what men call me. I refuse to be carried away. How can I claim what I did not work for? How can I claim an honor that does not belong to me? Hallelujah. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The most foolish person on earth is any man that tries to be a big man in God's presence. He's absolutely foolish. Absolutely. Absolutely. By every definition and every standard. Hallelujah. 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 See, you will never, never be this broken in God's presence and not contact authentic spiritual power. This is what has happened to a lot of people. They seek God as if they are talking to their mate. And when they see those who seek him in spirit and truth, they begin to criticize the depths and the dimensions that come from his presence. If you, I'm doing it in your presence so you will learn it. Break your pride in his presence. What do you have that he did not give you? Marriage, beauty. Warn to me if I let anything that he has given me become an idol and I cannot worship him. I will cry like a baby in his presence. I'd rather cry before him than cry before men. I'd rather be disorganized and undignified in his presence and contact something tangible that the world cannot deny. John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and let the whole world come and watch you burn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have lost worship in our churches, I'm telling you. We have lost the art of His presence. Many people know how to pray. But many people do not know how to touch the heart of God. I have found my servant, David. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to me. Hallelujah. There are some of you now that believe we are wasting our time. There are some of you scattered in the congregation just wondering, why are we wasting our time? In two more minutes, just cry out to him. You have two minutes. Just tell him whatever you want to tell him. Forget the fact that you came here with anybody. I know you are a man of God. I'm not asking you about the crusades you have gone through and how many wheelchairs. I don't care about all those vanities this night. I know you see visions. That's none of our business this night. Just two minutes. Let's stretch for two more minutes and we are done. Holy Spirit, we wait. become a great man of God, listen to me. When you become the great woman of God, don't be so ashamed to worship God in the presence of those who honor you. You let them know there is one who is mightier than you and that you are not ashamed to acknowledge this. Let Koinonia remain a place of your presence. Let it remain a habitation of the glory. We refuse to do what everybody is doing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute before you sit down, I'd like you to say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see more. Pray it inside and outside. Say, Lord, open my eyes. There is something you can show me that will make me a wonder to my generation. There's something Moses saw. There's something Elijah saw. There's something Elisha saw. Hear me. There is something you can see higher that will make your world celebrate you. I don't care what is not working in your life.
show me what I need to see to become a global wonder show me what I need to see to carry that healing anointing for real not fake powers show me what I need to see to end inferiority in my life show me what I need to see to make my generation listen to me show me what I need to see that is bigger than my background that is bigger than my failure show me what I need to see that can remedy for my past Hallelujah. 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 Father, help us. This is our cry. This is our desire. Show us something. I prayed this prayer years ago and God answered it and He's still answering it. Some of you are sitting quietly in this congregation. When God is done with you, you will be surprised what he will make. And you will remember these days. When I didn't have one night, I cried like this. Even if I have one trillion, I will still cry before him. When I could not afford to buy a good shirt, I cried like this doesn't matter what I wear I will roll it on the ground when I didn't hold a mic I cried like this when there was no one in that room I cried like this before a billion people I would still cry if God can get your heart he will give you his hands and when his hand comes upon your life he will do wonders hallelujah those who can sit down sit down if you cannot sit down sit on the floor sit anywhere don't worry sit down let's see what we can do in the few minutes we have never feel stupid for what you are doing never feel foolish never feel foolish for what you just did in koinonia we don't care who is who when we come before god's presence we are all equal as far as his presence is concerned thank you lord revelations 2 Let's see what we can touch this night. Verse 3. Shabalada Bakura Bada Bada Bada. This was the Spirit of God speaking. Jesus speaking to the churches. And this was the church, a message to the church in Ephesus. Let's start from verse 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how that cannot bear them who are evil. And thou hast tried them who say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love verse 5 this is a very important message remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent I want to show you 
why certain people have come out of the emphasis of the spirit listen please i have a very simple but powerful message my teaching very briefly this night seeks to teach you the spiritual principle that can make you relevant regardless of the seasons hallelujah there are certain people who begin to walk with the lord please listen to me when you look around nigeria today you will see certain people who were major apostolic voices before but right now they are quiet they have not backslidden but you know they are no longer in the current agenda of what the spirit of god is doing what makes a man to be a voice today a global voice and then later on he will lose relevance completely ministry motions are still on but the imprint of their grace is no longer speaking in the body of christ there are many people who have become victims of being etched out the candlestick has been taken out of his place the candlestick supplies light and when that light comes there is illumination there is direction hallelujah what makes someone to stand with god and that god will give him a voice and he will see mighty things in his life and later on the person just gets quiet i need to teach you this so that after 30 years if christ tarries we will still be relevant have you had people talk about certain people and say in the days of xyz this brother or this man was a fiery man of god and they list all the testimonies that used to happen in that church or in that music ministry or in that whatever it is and they say today the person is still there scrounging for relevance hallelujah the secret of sustained glory hear me there is nothing there is nothing as as horrifying as coming on the spotlight and then the lord shifts the light from you by himself not a demon spirit it's better not to have risen in the first place are you hearing what i'm saying than to be a voice to command unction across territories and then gradually you and everybody around you knows that god you have come out of season with god there are many people in the body of Christ today who are developing programs and different things to keep themselves relevant in the body. But everyone, including those who are not sensitive, they know that there is a shift. They are still part of the universal agenda of God. But the emphasis of God that's in that season, they did not make that match. They didn't qualify. Hallelujah. We are going to examine what does it take to remain relevant regardless of the kinds of seasons that God brings. What does it take to still be in God's program no matter what it is that he's doing that he will not be able to do it without you. That he can say although seasons are changing, dimensions are changing, prophetic faces are changing, but you still remain constant. There are churches today that have dried out of the agenda of God. They are just carrying what we are calling motions. Forcing a lot of relevance from every angle. But the sincere truth is that they are not carrying any candlestick again. Are you hearing me? And we are going to examine why. What does it take to be featured in God's current move? What does it take to be part of what God is doing in the now? Not what he did yesterday. Seasons change. The emphasis of God changes. But what does it take a man? What, do, what does it take a man to keep walking with God? That regardless of the season, you, see, you remain relevant. When I started out, there were many pastors. 
There are not so many in Zaria and around again. There used to be many people. Men of God. Different caliber and type of people. Some were doing ministry as if it's 100 meters. Hallelujah. Today some of them are not even in the faith. Not to talk of the ministry. Hallelujah. Some of them have fallen out of relevance. Many of them have entered into all kinds of things. May God keep us. I said may God keep us. Very quickly. Let's examine what does it take. To be part of God's program for every season. And not to be edged out when a new move comes. Number one. Character. Everybody write character. Now look up please. In subsequent teachings before the year wraps up. I'm going to teach us on. The mystery of the moon and the sun. Hallelujah. How that the moon is a type of the church. And the sun is a type of God. The Christ. Hallelujah. The moon does not have any light of its own. Is that true? It is whatever it gets from the sun that it reflects to the inhabitants. And that until believers come to that point where we have no life in ourselves outside of God. And all that people see is a reflection of all that he is. Number one, character. In Genesis 1 26, he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. The word image there means his nature, his attributes, his character. Let us make man to have our own type of character. And then his likeness means let him function like us. The same way we speak and things happen. Let him speak and things happen. Hallelujah. The same way we can change impossible situations. Many people have assumed the likeness of God, but not his image. Hallelujah. There are many of us, men of God, we are pressed to the dimension of God's likeness. His faith. We can speak like God speaks. We have his intelligence. We have his audacity. But we lack his image, his character, his nature. And on that character, there are two things we'll look at. Number one, a integrity b humility hallelujah you want to be relevant in god's agenda regardless of what seasons i'm giving you the key integrity we'll look at some scriptures very quickly proverbs 2 verse 21 god fired this thing in my spirit and i told him i said lord i want to remain relevant just write it i'll run through them very quickly these are scriptures on integrity. So A, integrity on that character. Proverbs 2 verse 21. It says, For the upright shall dwell in the land, and he that has integrity shall remain in it. Some versions say the perfect. Hallelujah. It said the upright will dwell in the land, but it is men of integrity that will remain. There are people who come and they go, but there are some people that remain. Hallelujah. Do you know what integrity is? Integrity is the ability to maintain your values regardless of the consequences, regardless of the circumstances. The ability to maintain your values. There are many people that where something they stood for something else years ago but right now they have compromised on their values integrity hallelujah that you represent something to the body and after 20 years you still represent it regardless of the consequences whether you have members or not whether you be famous or not integrity many people like integrity hate I, I mean lack integrity we dance to any tune that comes so long as it can sell hallelujah psalm 41 verse 11 to 13 very quickly still talking on integrity 
I just want the Bible to speak for itself. Lord grant us grace. We have to run. Psalm 41. I don't want to have to put a B part for this teaching. Psalm 41. From verse 11 to 13. Okay. By this I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Verse 12. He says, and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity and settest me before my face. 13. He said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. He says, my integrity, you upheld me because of my integrity. Can I tell you something? If you become a minister with integrity, if you become a man or woman of integrity that you refuse and say, I am not changing. What is seen today is seen after 30 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What brings the favor of God today will bring the favor of God after 30 years. No bribe, no corruption, no tricks, no pranks, no matter what it will cost you. Everybody say integrity. We lack this grossly in the body of Christ. Job, in Job chapter 2, Let's look at verse 3. Job 2. Verse 3. It was a great man. The Bible says, This was God himself speaking to Satan. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? He says, A perfect and upright man. This is God speaking about a man. That feared God and eschewed evil. He said, and still he holdeth fast what? His integrity. Although thou movest me against him. This sorry, Satan. I mean, this is God now. He said, thou movest me to destroy him without a cause. Although he has pain. Although this guy who was the greatest man in Israel. No crowd again. Nobody was talking about him. He used to be the talk of the town. The Bible says that he still held fast his integrity. Many people, you are a sister that promised yourself that no brother will sleep with you until you are married. But as your age is going by, are you getting me now? You say, okay, under certain circumstances we can bend. Everybody say integrity. Many people lack integrity in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Many people lack integrity. A man of God who starts out well, preaching the truth, saying a lot of things. The day a millionaire comes into his church, he now goes to meet the person to corner him and start doing certain things. I like you to say in the name of Jesus, I will hold integrity no matter what it will cost me. Let's run. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 of same Job 2. Verse 9. Everybody read. What, do, what did his wife tell him? The wife got so tired of his integrity. Your integrity can frustrate a lot of people. And they will tell you, why not bend? Are you not a Nigerian? Hallelujah. Have you seen people that sleep around and men of God convince them and say, who is not doing it? Everybody is doing it. Let me tell you, not everybody is doing it. There are some people that have refused to bow to bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you. Say, ah, everybody is doing it. Every man of God you see touch something, just forget. It's not true. There are some people that have made a determination in their heart. That they will hold fast their integrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, every miracle is stage managed. Forget Jare. I keep telling people if you think the miracles, well, I know there are places they stage manage miracles, but if you think it's easy to act a miracle, try it. Produce a Nigerian film called The Miracle and act as many miracles as you can act and see how it will wear you away. The wife. A time can come, even your father can say, what is it about sleeping with that director? We are suffering in this house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Does sleeping with somebody kill somebody? Or will you bend? Hallelujah. Last week after the service, a couple came and met me. And they said um, that they were not able to bring their tithe. And that this is the tithe. This is for koinonia. Koinonia tithe is not my tithe. I told them, I said, go and give the treasurer. Hello? There are some of you that say, ah, this is after service. What is there? Me and the ministry, what is the difference? Do you hold fast your integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at one more scripture. Shiba la cobra stiba. Let's just stop there. Number two, humility. I have to run. There are a lot of things I need to talk about and I want us to pray. Number two, that's under character, humility. Listen, everybody say pride. Say it again, pride. Let your ears hear what your mouth is saying. Say pride. Can I tell you something? Pride is worse than fornication. Many people do not know the danger of pride. If you see a man that was operating in a level of open heavens and suddenly you find out the ministry dead, no anointing again, no revelation, no insight. I tell you, at the root of everything, pride. It's what our Bible tells us. Let's read quickly a few scriptures. Proverbs 29 verse 23. Write it. Proverbs 29 verse 23. Pride is a killer. A killer of grace. A man's pride shall do what? Shall do what? A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall hope the humble in spirit. See a man who is humble. Humility is the ability to let men see God regardless of the degree of honor. To let men see God at all times. Hallelujah. There are people that come for counseling. Some of them old enough to be my parents. When they come, I give them a seat to sit down and they cannot even sit down. They just lie on the floor and they are rolling. And I'm wondering, who are they rolling for? A time, see, let me tell you. As you begin to rise, there are some things that you don't pray for now. But when authentic grace comes upon your life, you will value them as great prayer points. It's better not to rise at all. Are you getting what I'm saying? Than to rise and come down and be quiet. Are you seeing the reason why some people cannot be featured in what God is doing? A time came, the men became big men of God. Whether they pray or not, the power of God will still move. And you know, we men of God can fake it. Nobody will know. We can come on stage and do all the jamboree. Samson said, I will arise as before. Suddenly he found out that there was no hair again. Hallelujah. Pride goes before a fall. Matthew 23, verse 12. I wrote down a number of scriptures because I wanted to have it. Matthew 23 verse 12 Scriptures on pride Hallelujah Let's read And whosoever shall exalt himself Shall be abased And he that shall humble himself Shall do what? What's the secret of exaltation? Beyond your seed I want to tell you That the state of humility If you make up your mind That people will see God in my life I don't care what comes Hallelujah. There are many of us who begin to rise in grace in different levels of life and you start creating a strata between you and others. You see your friends and they greet you. Now I know that there is honor. Are you hearing me? There is a place for honor, but honor is not stupidity. You pass and you see your friends drinking Gary. You say, ah, may God help you. Next verse. Proverbs 22 verse 4. We want to consider this. Character is so important. I'm dwelling there. When I'm done, we'll just run through the others and pray. 
Everybody read. Just write it and read. They are projecting it to make it fast for us. We took some time to worship. One to read. By humility and the fear of the Lord. I what? How many arrogant people like money and they will never see it? Because the Bible tells us the secret. How does it come? By humility. Alongside the fear of God. Our riches, honor that you wouldn't die of hypertension and life. By humility, even wealth. See, there are certain people you see. They keep rising. After 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you see a man that used to be a global phenomenon. All his cars are parked now. You see him trekking to the junction. Something has happened. Are you hearing me? Something has happened. Pride. Say, Lord, grant me grace to be humble. Let's look at two more scriptures. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. I'm giving you all these scriptures because I want you to remember it. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. Hallelujah. Let's read it. One to read. Humble yourselves therefore under what? The mighty hand of God that he may so let me bring good news if you know you are humble right now it's a matter of time god is going to exalt you are you hearing me and when god is exalting you he doesn't need to consult with anybody he will exalt you overnight and when he exalts you he will watch you and he sees that you say lord even at this level i give you the glory god will say you are doing this for me take him higher and you rise higher you say lord even at this level even at this level there are certain men of God, their testimony has been from glory to glory. From glory. There are some men of God, you can attach faithfulness to them. You can attach diligence to them, but you cannot attach humility to their life. They are not humble at all. Hallelujah. There are others you know. I'm not talking of simplicity. Simplicity is not humility. There are many simple and arrogant people hallelujah that you say okay god gave you money to buy jeep you say me i'm not worthy i buy a bicycle that's not humility that's simplicity you just feel like being like those in singapore you want to ride your bicycle all around but that does not make you you can be very very arrogant pride and humility are of the heart i've seen extremely blessed and humble people I've seen extremely poor and arrogant people. In fact, there are more arrogant poor people than there are wealthy people. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 6. Last scripture on humility. James 4 verse 6. If you forget any scripture about humility, don't forget this. James 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Who resists them? If God resists you, who will deliver you? Hallelujah. There are some people, they, they are not under demonic you. God himself is against them. He says, God resisted the proud. But what does he do to the humble? That means if you see that there is no grace multiplied in your life, go and check your humility that's why you see certain people function after a while you will know see when a man grows in grace you know it he doesn't need to say it you see it you know that this is another dimension of grace hallelujah see after me i receive grace to be a man of character there are some of you i'm preaching to because you are at the verge of compromising you love god you want to be relevant some of you are men of god god have told you to sit down you want to get up now. You are saying, Kai, the way this thing is going, is doing me. Huh? They've already told me that they'll even give me two rooms to start church and counseling center. Sit down. God has warned you. You know the thing with God? He will speak once and he won't tell you anything again. You just go. And then you will face a root consequence. Character. Number two. What it takes to be relevant progressive depth in the understanding and the teaching of the kingdom 
progressive depth. You want to remain current in what God is doing. There must be passion. There must be depth. You must keep digging deeper. Seeking to understand the truths of Jesus, the truths of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. This is one of the major reasons why many men of God are already out of sync with spiritual things. They got to certain dimensions and that was good. But they camped around there and thought that was all there is. And then as people started rising, see, there are some things that years ago, if they happen in the church, people will run away because people had not grown to that level. And certain men of God seem to be custodians of those dimensions. Now, anybody in any fellowship can work. When people enter some dimensions, they start seeking more. And if you are not pressing, they will edge you out and continue moving. This is what has happened to a lot of people. Passion to keep knowing God more. Have you seen men of God that you listen to them? After seven years, there is no growth, nothing new, nothing fresh. You are not discovering anything. You are not excited about anything. You are not finding out a new dimension. You will not be sustained in the agenda of God. Progressive death. Three scriptures. Second Peter 3 verse 18. You must grow in progressive depth in the understanding of and in the teaching of the kingdom because there is so much don't let any man deceive you that there is nothing more to explore are you joking there's a man called richard sigmund please listen to me he went to heaven one of the few people who's going to heaven we can trust hallelujah we have not finished the series <laughs> we are coming back praise god he went to heaven and he went into a room called the library. The library that God himself wrote books about himself for people to keep exploring about him even in heaven with the renewed mind. And he saw someone sitting there and reading one of the books. Listen please. It was a library of many books. And when he entered, he saw the man and he came to the man. He said, how long have you been sitting here? And the man told him that in earth's time is two millennia. He has been sitting for two millennia and he checked the book he was on page two page what what you call rema let me tell you this is why demons don't move when they hear they say what is rema we knew this thing since the time of moses you are knowing it today you are now jumping and calling it rema grow in grace and what in the knowledge of the lord grow 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 everybody say i'm growing where you were yesterday and the dimension that oh speak to this mountain it will move okay demons can do this okay this let me tell you a time will come if you don't move they will move you out of the way it's what has happened to a lot of people i'm tired of the status quo it's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more than me. A genuine, hear me, a very serious man of God should be the type that can lead his congregation to a depth of pursuit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you send me text messages and you say, Sir, I just saw this scripture, this and that and that. And I look at the scripture and I'm like, Wow, I've never seen this light. And I pick up my Bible no matter how late. Let me tell you. My Bible, if I'm on the bed, my Bible follows me and my books. You ask the people that know me. If I wake up, I'm carrying it. I'm on the chair, it's there. If I'm lying down on the bed, as I'm lying here, it's, it's here. If I just wake up, I want to touch it and feel it because I can open it at any time. When God fires something into my head, I open it and check. What are you saying? Some of you don't have a passion for the word of God. You think revelation will just come because God likes you. The Bible says, buy the truth. It will cost you. Grow in grace. Are you growing in grace? Hear me. If you have a church here or you're a pastor or those listening online, if you are not growing in grace, a time will come your members will exhaust every revelation you have to give them and they will go and look for something more. At that time, you will start getting angry. Correct? 
This is what is happening with a lot of frustrated pastors. They have refused to press deeper. Hallelujah. Now, your member is coming to tell you, I went for one program and they explained something to me. Say, who, who asked you to go? Did I permit you? So you are saying what I'm giving you here. All this, all this, look, let me tell you. The remedy is to carry fire and carry unction. John Wesley says, set yourself on fire and watch the world come to see you born. And let me tell you, as I'm talking, make sure you are not thinking of another man of God. You are the one I'm talking to. You know, we don't do tell them in Koinonia. Tell who? I'm talking to you. Philippians 3 verse 8. Verse 10, sorry. Philippians 3 verse 10. Are you growing in revelation? When was the last time you had something new in your spirit that provoked you to study one scripture for two weeks? When did you have something that made you to go and buy three or four books? You said, Oh God, Jordan, order this book, order that book, order this. There are some of you, your Facebook, YouTube, and all of these things, they are avenues for you to dig deep. There's nothing provoking you. In my personal study now, I'm studying the blood, preparing for miracle service. I tell you, next week will be something else. All through this month, I've been studying on the blood. If it is true that the blood is God's last card, you know why? Because there are certain people who have come, I've prayed for them, and their situations have not changed. And it has been disturbing me. A lazy man of God will go and sleep and say, did I die for you? But you get angry. And say, Lord, this should not be. You are praying. If you pray for 10 HIV people and 3 get healed, that's not a good record. They are testifying and they are calling you MOG. But what about the seven? Hallelujah. If you pray for 10 people with cancer and 1 gets healed, or 100 people with genotype, and 20 get healed that's good clap appreciate god but there is more every time i go back i tell god lord there is more there are people who have had issues i could not solve open my eyes when you do that the heavens will be open god will say i have seen your heart you are not just getting rema so that you will be mog so that you will bombard and confuse people and compare spiritual things with spiritual things you have a desire to bring a revelation that will bring liberty to the body of Christ. Look at me. There are many people whose revelations have not profited the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Two days after you sit down, you cannot even remember what you had. The end of revelation is that you'll be liberated. I don't care what revelation you bring. At the end of it, if there are still demon-possessed people, there are still sick people, there are still oppressed people, they get back and they go into their frustration. You just did a religious jamboree. You must contend for revelation alongside the anointing to demonstrate it. Many people have rema that they copied and paste from one man of God. That's why there is no grace back in the revelation. They share it the way the man of God shared it, but they don't see what the man of God saw. The church is full of copy and paste Christianity because people are so frustrated. They are looking for anything that works. Anything. Right now, you just tune your TV. If they don't show people falling under the anointing in the advert, it looks like that ministry is not serious. So everybody... They go and start searching for videos that somebody fed. It doesn't matter what through the person. They just package it and push it together. Because everybody is trying to copy and paste. But there are men who carry a unique identity. When they come out, you know this is not copying. This one came from the secret place. Last scripture. Still the same uh, Philippians. Verse 13 to 14. Still Philippians 3. Brethren, I count not. This is Paul. Everybody say Paul. You know who Paul was? Let me tell you something. Paul got his revelation directly from the Spirit. Are you getting me? It was him that wrote what we call the Pauline epistles. He opened the body of Christ to dimensions of grace. Paul that was caught up in the Spirit many times. He died many times and came back to life. 
and this is what he has to say at the apex of his apostolic ministry brethren i count myself to have what not to have apprehended that means truly oh, me to have not caught this thing ha this is paul speaking he said, but one thing I do, hallelujah. He said, forgetting all the rema, forgetting the dimensions. Yes, I know I brought a new dimension. But he said, forgetting it and reaching forth unto those things that are what? Before. Verse 14. I press. Everybody say press. Everybody say press. That's the secret. There must be a dissatisfaction in your spirit. I go for meetings and sometimes when I'm teaching, People put their hands on their head and they are just looking at me. That's exactly what kills men of God. Hallelujah. I went for a meeting and we just had worship. Just worship. The first session. And when we came out, some of the people were just sitting on the floor. They said, what have we been doing? And you as a man of God, when you see that, you just nod your head. Say, so even them, they will know that God tried for me. A day will come. The hunger of those people will rise. They will catch up with that dimension and they will move. And you would think they don't respect you. They respect you. You just stop moving. And they had to move ahead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A lot of people say, this guy didn't used to greet me before. This was my boy. Oh. It's not the issue of boy. In the realm of the spirit, overtaking is allowed. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Never get to a point where you are satisfied. Listen, do you know there are times that I carry my former books, books that God taught me several things in the place of retreat, and I look at them. I have been teaching about them for years, but I sit down and I ask myself, Joshua Selman, do you really understand these things you have been teaching? Sometimes you need to tell yourself the truth and sit down. You have been teaching on faith. Sit down and you'll be shocked that you do not even understand it. Many of us have been teaching on tithing and you don't tithe. It means you have not yet caught in the revelation. Pause for a while and study your own messages. There is no koinonia message I've not listened to, including last week. And I don't collect it directly from the media. I download it myself. I want it to cost me. This message, this night now, because I'm flogging myself. When I finish, I'll now go and play it and sit on the floor. And say, Lord, speak, lash me, do everything. It's only me and you here. This is the secret of growth. There are men of God that have brought themselves to a point where it does not look like they can learn anything new again. Are you getting me? Even when they are reading the books of somebody else, it looks like, let me just see what this person wrote. Paradventure. If there is anything, I can pick one or two things. Ha. Pride. And it goes before a fall. Because... Dr. Paul Enenche says, it is God that will use the calabash to fetch water so that he will disgrace the pot. Hallelujah. Calabash to fetch. When, when pot is saying, I'm the only one, God will say, calabash, come. You are wood and you have holes. He will fetch water with it and it will not pour. Say, if you will not praise me, I will raise stones and create mouth and head in them and give them a brain and they will raise praise and worship while you stand there and you are watching me may god not replace any one of us in this current move of the spirit i tell you this is one of my greatest prayer points i pray every time and i say god let koinonia not get to a point where whatever it is would distract us that's why you see the way god helped us to design this ministry the leaders do very little of administration are you getting me I am almost not involved in the administration. What I do is generally just over. If you see me come out, I'm just coming to encourage the people. We have raised a robust leadership structure. Imagine that in the afternoon, I have to come and check and say, this decoration, did they do it well? And then I come and be chewing my mouth in the evening. And while I'm talking, demons are shouting, Amen. And then you say, come out. And the demons say, you, go out. They will drive you out of ministry. Some of you think we're in America. Let me tell you, you're in Nigeria. Africa. Hallelujah. That's why there are some days I don't let people just come to disturb me. I don't care what it is. You build yourself. 
many ministers one of the things that kill them is that they start doing administration and forget ministry hallelujah immediately after the program treasure will come how much is coming in now i saw one man what did he give open that white envelope you see when you leave the ministry of the word and prayer and you start doing all kinds of administrative things Nosing into departments that you set up you set up the department you are not allowing them to work imagine if i come here i say mike stand up i can play keyboard though i hope you know that and i see that i play and then i say Tosin, you are not getting this thing at the end of it you won't do what you are supposed to do and you come out and you see let me tell you where there is no fire members are dangerous people they know when this thing is not entry they just keep looking at you because they respect you at the end of it they'll say man of god this this message ah and then on their way back home they say bros nah this is no way hallelujah number three so number one character Number two, progressive depth in the understanding of the kingdom. Number three, this is very important. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Write it as long as I'm reciting it. Write it like that. Don't change it. I know why I put it. It may be too long, but it makes sense. I found a way of putting it. I found out that using synonyms will confuse you. Write it the way I'm dictating it. Are you ready? Write now. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom through consistent, notable miracles, signs, and wonders. Star consistent, star notable, or underline them. Grace to demonstrate in your meetings the reality of Christ and of his kingdom through consistent notable miracles signs and wonders you are not walking there you will not last period and full stop hmm. hallelujah a lot of people say me God just called me to teach he didn't call me into any healing or anything if you are sick come and sit down and hear the word if the word doesn't heal you, go back home. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says Jesus was in a place teaching. He said, and as he taught, the power, the gospel itself is the power of God. So if there is no power backing it, what you are teaching is something else. Hallelujah. Number three, are, are you writing it? Okay. Look at me. Say miracles. Shout it, miracles. Say signs say wonders can i tell you if you step into the miraculous the worst that can happen is they will criticize you but they will follow you forever forever how many not not 10 years they will follow you when grace to demonstrate the reality of christ i told god i don't want the kind of ministry i cannot prove what i'm teaching you can say oh there are sinners in this place blah 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 at the end of you say now those of you who are sinners just go back home and uh, think through what i've shared are you joking there's no power to make altar call that's why we round up our meetings with prayers if we teach you on impartation be sure that at the end of it there will be a mighty demonstration of the spirit if we call this meeting koinonia and you come in and you are surprised to see people falling under the anointing that's why we call it koinonia intimacy oh i believe in miracles absolutely i have no there is no i'm not one of those ministers that say miracle is not really important look miracle is very important john 6 63 let's look at these things quickly i pray that something will come upon you this night in the name of jesus christ Listen, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit that does what? That means if what I am speaking is truly of God, there should be a quickening. Is that true? The word quicken there means to give life. Is that true? 
to give life to your dead body to restore you it is the spirit that quickened he said the flesh empty talk does not profit anything he said the words that i speak they are what they are not just sermons they are spirit and they are life that means as i'm speaking to you something should be happening to your spirit man hallelujah two scriptures first corinthians 4 verse 20 Charles and Francis Hunter, mighty generals who did great things for God. They said one miracle is worth a thousand words. One. One authentic miracle. Everybody read. One to read. For the kingdom of God is not in, but in the kingdom of God is characterized by a demonstration of power i'm not just talking of falling down and then you stand up and you cannot identify what happened to you that you fall down and stand up and know that something happened hallelujah there was a time ben Hinn was just laying hands on people they were falling or a robbers looked at him and said benny don't just throw them down give them something that means you can throw people down. A great man of God in John G. Lake's time. John G. Lake sat down and was watching him. He was ministering. He was laying hands on people. Over a hundred people. They were just falling down. When they finished, people were clapping. John G. Lake laughed and said, follow me to my office. When he got into my, the person's office, John G. Lake said, only 30 people were healed. All those other people you were playing on stage. These are the people you say men to. They were men. Generals indeed. Hebrews 2 verse 4. Oh, may your ministry be characterized by authentic signs and wonders. Current. Listen, I said notable. Consistent. Not one miracle per year. It's not enough to challenge people. God also bearing them witness that means a miracle is a confirmation god is stamping what you have you have said god also bearing them witness both with what signs and wonders and with what diverse heterogeneous miracles in different areas i'm not the man of god that believed that only the sick have a package to receive uh -uh. anybody bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed whether it was sickness whether it was whatever and the gifts of the holy ghost according to his will could it be that this is why your church is not growing that you are a great man of god with revelation but there is no grace to demonstrate the reality of what you are saying i don't mean this childishness that people do after meeting even when there is no reason they just call three ladies you have shared the grace you must force two of them to fall down. That's not what I'm talking about. There are men of God who are under pressure to show their anoint. The moment they stand up, they say, there's a lady here, stand up. They waste people's time. 30 minutes, they are dead. And they come, one finger, two fingers, three. They now push. Now they turn you. When I was teaching my friends on the anointing, I told them, never turn a person's head. This is nonsense. Brother, if you have power, it will show. Come on now. Hallelujah. I'm not against if you caught a revelation of doing it. I don't know. It may mean losing the person from captivity. I can't judge you. Are you getting me? But one thing I want you to know is that when there is authentic power, it will speak. Do you know what it means to speak and your words will throw a man down? A man who is matured and standing minding his business you are talking and the word throws him down that's power my brother that's authentic power if it's not power do it <laughs> hallelujah i remember one of our brothers sadiq ibrahim how many of you remember him there are a few people that that occult guy that guy slept in the grave for three days how many days three days he got all kinds of power escaped from many prisons in this nigeria belonged to a cult called highlander 
he was dying of HIV and tuberculosis with all his jars. He sat outside like this. I came up on the stage and the Holy Ghost roared through me like a lion. The brother said all he knew was he saw fire. That was the end of it. They carried him and brought him here. You people saw him, right? Healed of HIV, healed of tuberculosis. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. The guy said when he was outside and he saw people falling, he said, yes, there's power in this place. Whether it's of God or it's Babala, there is sharp power in this place. Look, let me tell you, I say this not to brag. There are many of you, if it's not because of the demonstration of the power of the Spirit, you will not come here. Many of you saw something that troubled you. We were sitting outside. When somebody ran outside by himself, you just said, ah. Next Sunday, you gathered all your stubborn brothers from home and said, let's go. I'm tired of this trouble you are creating at home. Just come and sit down here. Some of you came here. It was criticism that brought you. You just came to criticize. And when you sat down, before the praise and worship will finish, God started doing what he was going to do on you and see what has happened to your life now. The power of the Holy Spirit. This is why we believe. But the balance here is when the power takes the place of the accurate teaching of the word, that's when it becomes an error. Every meeting cannot just be power. Keep throwing people up and down, up and down. It is the word that builds. And when I say word, I don't just mean this word, word men of God are saying. The accurate teaching of scripture. Because what some people are calling word is not word. It's just stories. Let's hurry up. There are others, but these are the most important aspects. Listen, when you see any man or any ministry or any individual... That is beginning to be etched out of the program of God. These are some of the things that have gone wrong. Character is dwindling. The person is no longer contending for death. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it happens when people start celebrating you. They say, ah, you. Do you know this revelation you brought? I've never had it anywhere. Members can deceive you. Members know how to talk to you. They'll just say, man of God. Oh, the text, some of you write to me. If I follow your text, I would have died since. Since. Some of you just write the text. Oh, my father. Where would I have been if this and that and that and that? Your grace, the oil on your life. And before that happens, I wrap my head. I say, you are not expanding anywhere. Remain there. Look at me. Could this be what has destroyed some of you now? Before you started leading prayers in your small fellowship, you were honestly humble and you used to seek God. But they made you to start leading prayers in your small fellowship. Right now, even where they told you to be sitting before, just say me now, see, there are levels in the spirit. I've paid my price and allow me to enjoy my thing. There are some of you who cannot go back and clean chairs in your churches again? Hello? You can't clean chairs in your churches again. Say me. I had a one brother that I think he was a pastor somewhere. And the faculty, his faculty fellowship on campus there chose him to be something. I think chief usher or so. When they called him, the guy said, he. God didn't tell me I'm going to serve as chief of usher. I say, ah, my brother, that chief usher is the best gift that God has given you because it will remind you at every time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I look forward to the time that I'll go for a meeting where there is a great man of God and there'll be nobody to play keyboard. And I'll just remember I used to be the music director. I'll just play and say emoji right on sir and while i'm playing i'm saying lord whatever is on this man i won't leave this place the same way pride there are others but i think i'll save them or let me just there are three of them i'll just list quickly prosperity the spirit of excellence 
and good leadership. These are the other three. But you really don't need to emphasize this is what I want to get. Because the other three, once I start talking of money now, some of you will be happy. I, I want this sacred, this spirit of holiness that is in the atmosphere to remain. I don't want any talk of money to come and scatter it. That's why I don't want to talk about these other things. There is an atmosphere right now that has been created. If I start talking of money, prosperity, spirit of excellence, and leadership, it will neutralize this lashing that God is doing for some of you now. So let's just leave it there so that it will enter and cause change. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. The burdens you have carried For in the sanctuary God is here Please remain seated. We'll stand up in a minute and I want us to pray. Don't bow your head yet. There are some of you, you are at the verge of losing out on the agenda of God. Some of you are losing out on character. You are losing out on character. The way you have started behaving with ladies is calling for caution. You are just laughing about it. God is already pointing and saying, oh boy, you are going too far. You are going what? Too far. Listen, you need to be examining yourself. And may God bless you with friends that can have the courage to say, my brother, that hug was not a normal hug. You have been hugging for 10 years. The one you did this night. No way. Let's go. Let's go and pray. Let's go and pray fast. If you do not have people around your life that can tell you this truth, you will die soon. Hallelujah. There must be people around your life that will not call you man of God. Say, my brother, what was happening? This program was happening. It's until they wave hand before you. And who are you looking at? Say, truly, oh, me too, honestly. I love God, but this relationship thing, me too. Let's pray. You see, God has helped you. If you do not have people around your life that can help you like that, you can stand and be entering the pit and be claiming you are standing till the day it covers you. People cannot find you again. Where are you? You are in the pit. Hallelujah. The Bible says to examine yourself. Don't surround your life with psychophants who are always telling you what is good alone. Let me tell you, you may hate them. And those of you who talk to people, talk to them in love. Don't carry your big mouth and start lashing people. See, how can you? You're a man of God. You are now telling me you watched pornography yesterday. Help the brother. That he came and spoke to you. Whereas you too, that's what you did. Let him that stand take heed lest he falls. Character. Some of us do not have character at all. You run your mouth anyhow. The moment you step out of here, you carry koinonia and leave it in CGC. And you come out. There's a way I talk. Anybody that I will wash you down. Character. You want to be relevant. Who do you want to marry? I want to marry a man of God. I want to be a woman of God. With this your mouth, God will not take you there. No way. Hallelujah. There are some of you that just have this disdainful way of looking at people. When they are not rich, they are not your class. And there is a way you look at them. This guy that cannot even speak English. You keep tapping your neighbor and laughing at the person. One day you will look for a job and open the door of the office and see that it's the person you are laughing at who is going to give you the job. And the person will look at you and say, it's my turn to shine now. Number two, there must be a pursuit in your heart. See, the day you stop seeing the need to seek more of God, please stop coming for koinonia. There is no need. Koinonia is the place where when people are weary, are you getting me? When they know there is more, this is why we always keep the fire burning. Because there are some of you, you travel and you go and meet some of these, your godless friends around. And they just water it down. There are many people crying and begging for 
that Asu will just call up the strike. Not necessarily because they want to come back. It's like fun. They want to just blow some fresh air. I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. For nothing, no place, no one else will do. For you satisfy the longing inside. Da 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 My heart and my flesh rise out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning. It was a revelation to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. you must contend for revelation be ever learning no matter what level you get humble yourself to learn not just those from those who are greater than you you can learn from children you can learn from animals if you maintain a teachable heart number three contend for authentic power I tell you we have a very 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 powerless church there are just few powerful men of God it's my desire to see that the least among us here is working in dramatic levels of grace even if you are not called into the fivefold ministry that when we begin to give testimonies here we we'll hear that you raised the dead at home we we'll hear that you did mighty things that you spoke over lives and territories this is our joy not what God did through the ministers but what God is doing through you this is our satisfaction hallelujah rise up on your feet for seven minutes all the hands of everybody around you we are going to pray in tongues seven minutes of fire and praying in tongues go ahead Participate. Reke teke
Hallelujah. 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 Now, prayer point number one. In the next two minutes, flog it out with God. Whatever you know in your life, hear me. That is not showing good character. I don't care what it is. Especially lack of integrity and pride. You are going to pray right now. See, let me tell you. Humble yourself in this place tonight. If it's masturbation, if it's pornography, if it's immorality, are you getting me? If it's theft, if it's smoking, if it's drinking, if it's backbiting, slander, whatever can make you irrelevant, I'm not doubting your salvation. Open your mouth and say, Lord, prune it out of me now. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I set aside a time every week for personal re examination. Personal re examination. I say, Lord, am I beginning to have an unusual desire for women or money or pride or ministry? See, when you see a man who is in the presence of God, you will never see a challenge in his life for a long time. After a short time, you don't see it again. That's a sign that you went to the presence of God. Men don't just fall overnight. It's a progression of carelessness. Progression of carelessness. Hallelujah. Number two, we are going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes. Let revelation. I, 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 I refuse to brag at the level I am now spiritually. I humble myself. There is more. Take me there. Lift your voice and pray. Take me there. Let us 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this that prayer, I want you to pray it with understanding. Hallelujah. You are going to pray and say, Lord, let the unction to back up the things I've been telling people. Let the anointing to demonstrate the reality of these revelations. Otherwise, men will think I'm lying. Say, Father from the throne, let fresh power lift your voice and pray. Fresh power. The power of the Holy Ghost for signs, for wonders, miracles, diverse demonstrations. Power, power in the name of Jesus. We receive power. Power to dethrone principalities. Power to heal the sick. Power to set the captives free. Power to liberate destinies that have been bound. Power to save sinners. Power to command results. To command victory. Take it, take it, take Holy Ghost, we ask you, let there be a ray of fresh power, fresh fire, fresh power, fresh fire. Power for signs, power for wonders, power for miracles to shut the gates of darkness, power over territories, power over HIV. Power over cancer, power over poverty, power over marital delay, power over yokes of darkness, power over ancestral curses. Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive fresh option, fresh play. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. This is the missing link that has made some of your loved ones to deny the grace of God upon your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whenever they cry, you join them and cry too. Whenever they seek for help, you are helpless before them. But tonight, in one more minute, you are going to say, Lord, it won't happen like this again. I am tired of joining unbelievers let my coming for koinonia show out there let my coming for koinonia let it show that i'm contacting power Don't let anybody fool you. The earth responds to power, my brother. He said, Behold, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. Listen. Hear me. We cannot come into your homes. We cannot meet your loved ones. That's why we are training you. We are setting you on fire. 
that you will go and be the ambassador of what good is it if we keep training you and then we are the ones who keep traveling to your to help the people that from today you say i'm an ambassador i'm not ordinary again whether you're a man or woman see listen hear me hear me the holy ghost is ministering to me we are going to pray against the spirit of fear many of you have this anointing but the boldness not to do foolish things but to take steps the boldness to make declarations and tell your family members i know you know me as your child but i'm speaking as an ambassador of heaven that fear and shame cast it right now lift your voice and pray one minute fear that stops me Go, 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 Kata. You are anointed. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear of your past. You must not be a man of God or a woman of God as it is. You are an ambassador. You are an envoy. Afra, take a I command fear out of God's people. I command humility. Bold as lion. Bold as lion. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 When it comes to dealing with people, they should see you as gentle as a dove. Are you hearing me? You are cautious. You are loving. You are forgiving. Somebody does something against you and thinks you are going to destroy him and say, bless you. Don't worry. But when it comes to dealing with devils, you can't be a dove. Come on now. Hallelujah. See? There are many of you, the devil is sitting on your destiny happily because you are not angry enough. Are you hearing me? Some of you don't fast. Some of you don't pray. Can I tell you something? It's my personal recommendation that an average believer should fast at least once in a week. We have not been taught. A lot of people say the era of fasting is where to get out those demonic teachings out of your way. That's why the people are not powerful. The devils keep moving around. Let me tell you. Not, not out of religion. You can start from once in two weeks. As a worker here, as a leader. You, I don't know how people live. At least once in a week. Dedicate some time. Not this fast that you are dragging already from 8 o'clock. Waiting for 4 or 5 once it's for you just say where is the food you gather your breakfast lunch and dinner you want to revenge no see it's time for you to begin to undo many teachings that are frustrating your christian life are you hearing what i'm saying fasting is part of the kingdom keys that set any man on fire no demons know those they can oppress there are others that oppress demons the bible says i have sent carpenters to terrorize these homes hallelujah praise the lord make it a point of duty at least once in a week dedicate some time wait upon the lord even if you cannot wait all day you can start from 6 to 12 hallelujah spend the time praying sleep under a message get gathered some of these hot koinonia messages put them together and fire your spirit and see the demon that will remain there so the lord brings a word and says that yoke is over you receive it and say this yoke is over so says the spirit and so says the bride Do you believe what I'm telling you? And then you will marvel and wonder 
at how things begin to change. He says, and there was a, a sound, a sound and bones. Now imagine if Ezekiel had to search for the bones one by one. No. There is ease when you understand the ways of God. Just agree with the spirit and the bride and commit God's integrity. The bones will find themselves. Were they not created in the first place? The spirit and the bride. So the Lord says, hear me, it's time to rise. And the spirit and this bride of his says, come. And you believe it. And you also say, come. Because you are the one that has heard. You hear that word. They heard the word, but the word did not profit them. Where did the word come from? From the spirit and the bride. But the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hearing has a lot to do with your receiving. You must hear. It's good to see, but you must also hear. And you must participate in the result as proof that you believe. Are we together? Now let me tell you the three main ways that God's blessings the general technology is that the spirit and the bride comes. But all our solutions, please listen, all the solutions we search for come in only three dimensions. Number one, every solution that you seek, including that which you seek tonight, will come by the ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. The ministry of the anointing. You can put there the supernatural. There are dimensions of the workings of God that require the supernatural straight up. Like the healing of infirmity. Someone is here now for instance, maybe with cancer or maybe a problem. You don't need any counseling. There's no counseling there. You need the supernatural. Someone is here and things, you know, you need the hand of God directly. It's the first way that the word becomes flesh so that what is not suddenly becomes ah, and what is suddenly leaves just like that amazing miracle amazing miracle a womb that is not becomes immediately a womb that cannot receive child cannot receive seed becomes yesterday I was ministering in Abuja and I was so touched when a woman walked up to me and said, Apostle, you were here a few years ago and you ministered to me and you prophesied um, that I would get married and I will have a child. And then I had a miscarriage the first time and I felt so bad. And when you returned, you prophesied that I will have a baby girl. This is the baby girl. When I held that child, I was not holding a child. I was holding the word that has become flesh. That you may come here trusting God to increase your ministry and expand the reach, expand the demand upon your grace. There may be things to learn, but in the final analysis, there is a level of fire and grace that must rest upon you. And you will return back and marvel and wonder it will look like you held a charm and put it in your pocket. What manner of the workings of the spirit is this? Please believe the supernatural. The supernatural is not for Pentecostals. If you do not believe the supernatural, you, your life will be in trouble. It will be a compendium of pain. God can invade time and manipulate things. The anointing is the agency that he has allocated. Medicine has given us a glimpse of the way the anointing works. Watch this. If I have a boil, we have a lot of doctors here. If I have a boil and my leg is swollen, sometimes they may not need to do anything to the boil exactly. They will just give me a few drugs with a dosage and say swallow it. Is that correct? And while I'm swallowing it, I don't speak to the drug and say drug please. Make sure you don't go to my brain by mistake. This is where, no, no. Designed in that drug 
is the ability to find what is wrong. Once you swallow it, once it enters your system, it becomes compatible with all your organs. Your organs begin to align them. Ah, God. And you will watch something within days start going down, going down. Last week when I saw you, your leg was swollen. Where did that mass go to? It vanished. Do you expect God to be that slow? What then is the difference between him and medicine? Medicine is, is a fragrance of his mercy reaching earth. Like, like I, 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 I wear perfume and when I pass, whatever your nose can receive, you enjoy it for that moment. But what if I gave you the bottle? No, 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 please, I don't downplay medicine, but I want you to understand this. I believe in miracles. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe lives can change. I believe that what is not can become. In the twinkling of an eye, I believe it. Otherwise, we are gathered here for a waste of time. I really believe it. Ah. I believe it. I believe that something that is missing can return back. Everything is alive. I believe. I am a miracle myself. I'm not just a recipient of miracles. I am a miracle. This man that stands before you is a real miracle. So I know that miracles are real. Please don't get used to pain. Don't get used to the tragedies of life. Expect that God can invade this life. Let me tell you a miracle that happened to me. We were in Lagos for young and yielded and then I ministered. I ministered in the church that we always use their auditorium. And something strange happened. While I was counseling, a man came who, um, of course, I'm sure he could understand English, but he felt comfortable speaking in Yoruba. And he came and sat close to me and started talking in Yoruba, you know, just as you. And now he was an elderly man. This is something that happened last week. I didn't know. I said, now, how do I respectfully tell this man, sorry, sir, I'm not exactly Yoruba. And the guy was talking to me. And the next thing that happened, was I started understanding exactly what he was saying. This is not a lie. The same way you preach and someone is interpreting. I was hearing what he was saying. Then I was responding to him in English. And then he would tick the first one. Tick the second one. We were done and I prayed for him. Immediately I, I finished praying for him. That was it. You, I will not be able to hear anything again. Where have you kept God? Oh. Where have you kept God? Where have we reduced the God of heaven to? Please, listen, 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 listen. Man himself is a miracle. Everything happens on earth. It's just that we don't take our time to ponder. I believe in the supernatural. It is the way God reaches men. What is not becomes. That means it is possible for someone who has no business calling you to call you. Why should you wonder? It is the Lord's doing. Let it only be marvelous in your eyes. While you are listening to me, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Take away the unbelief. Dear ones, take away the unbelief. There is a God that sits in heaven. That God is not a man. God is not an archangel. God is not Angel Michael. He's not a senior brother to the angels. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. Are we together? Oh. The supernatural. A generation that does not believe the supernatural is the generation that will truly miss God experientially. Hi. 
we need to trust God for grace. This is one of the benefits of things like praying in the spirit. To take you out of this mundane realm of carnality. Where we always, we believe that things must happen by science alone. No, sir. There is a God in heaven. By this time tomorrow, there is a God in heaven. The rod of Aaron that did not have a root to the earth can still bring forth fruit. It is true. These have been my contemplation, so not just today. It's been in my heart. You can, you can see the passion with which I'm communicating. A generation is losing the essence of the reality of the power of God. The ministry of the anointing is gradually being lost. And when I say the ministry of the anointing, I'm not talking of flying up and down, falling down. The ability to demonstrate the existence of God who sits in the heaven. This has nothing to do with being an apostle or a prophet. It's how far God can reach to men. For I spoke a word. Yes. You have been so, so good to me. I don't know the song, but I like the song. part of the song I love. is a demonstration of God's love he knows that you already got born again at 40 when will you know God to become great already you are late you are late already so the dimension of his supernatural can bring mercy can bring favor jump and accelerate your life and push you forward otherwise why is he God please believe what I'm saying God knows that he called you into ministry and he knows the people he's sending you to. He knows the stubbornness in their heart that until they see miraculous signs, they won't come. So he, listen, he's not going to send you just with a sermon. No. How then will you demonstrate and defend what he sent you? Moses said, what will, who will I tell Pharaoh sent me? power of God. Let us be a generation that can believe the power of God. That when God says I can lift you, you believe it. When God says I can anoint you, you believe it. When God says I can turn your life around, you believe it. Please hear me. What more do you need to see to know that natural things don't count very much in this realm? You have to be outstanding by an agency that is not human. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs, you will not believe. Jesus himself said it. Except you see it. There is a demonstration of the hand and the might of God that must rest upon us and rest upon our generation. Why will you write your prayer request if it will not be answered? Why should you travel I'm aware that some of us have been here, right? A number of people that I ministered to in Abuja followed me here. There are people who have come from all over. There's a pastor, you're the one who came from Ukraine? From Ukraine, all the way. And for heaven's sake, why will you come and watch a man? Am I a, a comedian? 
This is not an amusement park. Oh, there is a God that sits in heaven. Please hear me. There is a God that sits in heaven that can speak, that can lift, that can turn a man's life around. Shake that unbelief. Shake that unbelief. Get it out of your life and believe that God is able to turn a man's life around. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, the changes need a price in love, lives a night and I. I could earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Let me tell you, one of the major things that I know God is going to be doing tonight is healing the sick. There are mysterious diseases that are coming and latching upon people. You see people dying for diseases and sicknesses with no name. It's, it's like headache, but it's not headache. It's like chest pain, but it's not chest pain. It's like asthma. But it's not asthma. It's like a lump, but it's not a lump. It's like a growth, but it's not a growth. Whatever it is, we know it's an oppression of the devil. Please sit down. Let me finish up and then we'll pray. So by the ministry of the anointing, number two. How blessings manifest. The second dimension is by the impartation of wisdom and understanding. The second way that the word becomes flesh is that the Lord by his spirit will impart upon a man the spirit of wisdom and understanding. There are certain results that don't need the supernatural as it were. They just need an awareness of the laws of God and the fortitude to walk in accordance with those principles. There are dimensions that doesn't just need an event. The power of God is coming on two people outside. Two people outside. Please bring them here. Two people outside. I started sensing a very mighty grace. Ah, tonight will be a great night of impartation. Please bring them here. Just listen to the word. The Lord will do a quick work. Two people. I see like rain. The rain of the spirit is about to be drenched. For I spoke a Ali Baru Please bring them. The Lord is saying, I'm shifting you, both of you, that you are entering a dimension of the favor of God. This is what I'm seeing. You came here to contact the grace that will bring you into a strange realm of favor. And I declare by the spirit of grace that everything that is not of the Christ over your lives and destinies, this is miracle service. It must bow to the name and the Lordship of Jesus. Shadow you and light up Mountain you will climb up Coming out to me
Number three, and then we'll pray. The third way that the word becomes flesh, that possibilities get to you, is through the ministry of men. 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 Men are God's conduits. They communicate possibilities. Most of the favor that you need is already in the hands of a man. You need the ministry of men. I don't just mean the prophetic ministry of men. You need the giving ministry of men. You need the lifting ministry of men. You need the endorsing ministry of men. Please tonight, let your expectations be high. God will not disappoint you. The word becomes flesh. The word becomes a testimony when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon that situation. The word becomes a testimony when you are given spiritual illumination, wisdom, understanding, the fortitude to comprehend spiritual things. Then the word becomes flesh when men are introduced in your life. Men are carriers of possibilities, not just spiritual possibilities. There are men that have the wealth to give you. There are men that have the endorsement, the leverage, their credibility is an asset. They can bring it upon your life and turn your life. Everything that we seek for in this place tonight comes under these three categories. There are matters that only the anointing can solve tonight. There are matters that the quickening of the spirit providing illumination will channel you to solve. But there are things that men, 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 given by God. Listen, when the man at Get Beautiful met Peter and John, he didn't say, such as in, is in heaven. He said, such as I have. There are things men have. Please hear me. There are things that men have and they can give it. There are things that men have and they can give it. A man can have a car and give you the key to the car. A man can have, but you see, the things that men have, real blessings are not physical. When a man gives you anything physical, it's not really a blessing. It's just a donation. Real blessings are spiritual. All the sons of Abraham, he gave them physical gifts. But to Isaac, he gave him the blessing. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are going to do a quick walk tonight. But I trust God to heal the sick. This, 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 there is a grace today to, to damage all kinds of infirmity. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all. Healing all. They that were oppressed of the devil. Tonight, you will lift up that report, that threat that stands before the God of heaven. There are many of us here, I believe, who are in ministry. We may not exactly have needs. Tonight is also a night of impartation. Listen, an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It can be transferred. You can carry something back that you did not come with. You can carry a grace that while you were in the car coming, it was not yet in your life. And your results will show what has been introduced in your life. Are we together? Please rise up, lift up your voice in one minute and declare, Lord, I believe. I believe. I'm a believer tonight. Everywhere, outside, inside, pray.
that diligently seek the rewarder, the healer, the lifter. I want to pray. Please listen. Listen. Please don't get used to the ritual of what is done here. It is not just a ritual to pray, have people fall under the anointing. Be sensitive to what God is doing everywhere. But be sensitive to what he's doing in you, around you. Be sensitive to the graces you are receiving. Be sensitive to the prophecy that is coming upon you. Be sensitive to the things that are changing. Be sensitive to the mantles that are resting upon you. Be sensitive to what is happening. Be sensitive to the speakings of the Spirit. So I, I don't want you to get used to the, the, the ritual. Oh, you're about to see people in front. No, 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 no. Let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven and he's the lifter of men. Please hear me. You are a visitor here coming. You are welcome. We'll acknowledge you later on. But please insist that you did not waste your time to come for nothing. Please. I know you have heard and I know you came for an experience. Many of us have inconvenienced ourselves not under the best of conditions to be here. Please don't waste your stay. Let your heart be open to carry something tangible. Hallelujah. Satan is behind many predicaments of our lives. Satan is behind many of the ills that continue to happen. Please let me have your attention because I want to pray now. And the power of God, listen please. As I begin to pray, there are people here. You see, God may not necessarily, don't worry, it's okay. Excuse me, that's all right. Leave your seats, please. There are people here who are sincere people, even believers. But your life and destiny is under the strange influence of the operation of darkness. The Bible says many things happen in Mount Zion. And one of it is that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Please, I like you to believe. This is no ordinary prayer. Remember, it is the Spirit and the Bride that is talking. You are only seeing the Bride, but it's the Spirit and the Bride. I'm about to pray, and I want you to please believe. Because everything that does not represent Christ must go today, now. A few weeks ago, I had an encounter, and the Holy Spirit told me, you are about to experience a new lifting in your authority in the Spirit. Listen, please. This is the first time I'll be sharing it. And I saw, every time I see it, this is what I see. I see like a badge in the Spirit, a promotion. And the, the Lord said, I will put power upon your lips in another dimension that as you declare, you will see it happen. It's, this thing is a grace. It's a grace. It is not every time a man declares with power. There are times that you declare with authority. It's an office. Let me pray. Thank you, Jesus. There is a very serious deliverance that is about to happen. And please, I want you to bring the people in front. 
I'm seeing yokes. I'm telling you, I'm seeing real bondages. God has anointed this place to be a place of liberty. Right now, I declare by the Spirit of the Christ. And I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. And except God is not God, any planting that is not of the Christ over your life and your destiny, I speak by the grace of God Almighty that He must let you go. Now, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command devils, I command spirits, yokes that have tied down the destinies of men, be gone now by the spirit of the Christ. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Go now, release every destiny, release every destiny, release every destiny. Release every destiny. Release every destiny. Release every destiny. I decree and declare. The Bible says even the captives, the lawful captives shall be delivered. Therefore I declare that every legal access upon which the devil is holding on to anyone's destiny. Right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost be delivered now. 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 He baratos kalabaratakata. Enketa lakatos kabratasia. I command closed doors be open. Closed doors be open. Right now be open. Closed by the hand of darkness. I declare be open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. is showing me chains over people's heads I decree and declare anyone here under any kind of yoke at the count of three inside outside online I want you to shout that name again it's not a ritual done out of unbelief there is force and power in the name one two three every orchestration go now be loose now. Be loose now. In the name of Jesus, be loose. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus. The Lord is showing me people who have been at the same level for many years. There is nothing you do in time that moves you forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire just rising from my limbs. I'm about to pray that prayer. Anyone who has been kept at the same position, right now by the anointing of the Spirit, I declare that limitation broken now. Broken now. Help them. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right away, I want to pray against barrenness. I'm sensing the grace. Don't wait till you are married. If there is anyone here by the Spirit of God, 
by whatever means your womb has been closed by the authority of heaven I declare right now I'm seeing the anointing coming on a number of people married or unmarried let that womb be open now be open now be open now I tell you the anointing of God is coming on people whether you are married or not some of you are standing in for your loved ones I declare again womb be open now be open now be open now be open now I command every devil ah, I'm seeing such I'm still seeing people's feet tied like a chain around the feet of people right now I decree and declare every chain holding anyone now in the name of Jesus I break those chains now I break those chains now. I break those chains now. I break those chains now. Hallelujah. If you have any abdominal pain, lay your hands right now. Lay your hands just on your stomach. Any kind of abdominal pain. Doesn't matter whether it's a fibroid, doesn't matter whatever. Just lay your hands here right now. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is coming upon your stomach area. And in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now. Let there be a miracle right now. I'm seeing a number in the realm of the Spirit 21. And the Lord is saying an anointing is coming on those people. And that grace is for direction. You are at a point in your life where you are confused. You honestly don't know what to do. But right now I stretch my hands. 21. I see it in the realm of the spirit. Right now let the anointing of the spirit bring in direction. Ending confusion. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Direction. Direction. Direction in ministry, direction in business, direction, geographic direction. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for speed. I'm going to continue praying for speed until I see it manifest. Now please hear me. Because of what happens when I pray for speed, the ushers are limited. Make sure that you protect anyone because people will start running up and down. That grace for speed must find expression. I will continue to pray it until you leave your current level. I stretch my hands by the privilege of God's grace and I declare, I don't know what has caused delay, but the mantle that commands speed right now at the count of three, Koinonia, hear me. One, two, three. Receive speed. 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 In your destiny. Speed. Do in one month what one year could not do. Do in one month what five years could not do. Do in one month in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're trying to conserve time. There is a lot to do. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. 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 All those who are in front under the anointing here, I command the devils that have oppressed you. This is the house of God. 
right now at the count of three release them release everything you have tied down one two three go go now every strange spirit go now go now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty Janet, I'm hearing a name, Janet. Hold on. Please don't, don't be rowdy. Just relax. Stand up, my dear. That lady on green, stand up. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kaduna State. Relax. Calm down. I want to pray for you. Listen. God is not just calling names at random. I want to pray for you. You can expect that there will be so many genets. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. One of you, as I'm, I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you right now. It's, it's not something you can stand. The power of God, we're going to have to do a quick work because we want to take out time and minister to the sick. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare. There's one of you, the anointing of the spirit. Let's just walk that instruction first. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare on all of you. I may not have time to prophesy one by one, but every barrier that stands between you and the next level, I declare, let it go now. I curse it by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God is coming on a lady just where... This, my brothers, are standing. Bring that person. Just this row. I'm seeing a cloud. Just right here. Right now as I'm speaking. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on one person there. Please bring the person. It's a lady. Bring her. Janet, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. This is an instruction God is giving me. There is a family. I'm seeing the family. It's a whole pattern. Nobody marries. No matter what happens. I'm about to pray. The power of God is coming on that one person for the sake of the family. Please, I want you to believe and receive. I declare that marital delay. This is the instruction God is giving me. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. The Lord is opening my eyes. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing the map of Benway State. An anointing is coming right now on Benway. God is bringing a miracle. I release my, I stretch my hands and I declare a miracle right now. It's a sign and a wonder how God does it. Ben wasted, Ben wasted, Ben wasted. I cause the workings of darkness over that territory. In the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The Lord is taking me to a neighboring state. I'm literally seeing myself in Kogi state. And the Lord is saying he's breaking witchcraft. I don't know who are those who are from there. But I stretch my hands. Kogi state. May that anointing come upon anyone associated with that territory. That is under the yoke of bondage. Be free now. Be free now. Kogi state. Be free now. Be free now. God does these things that men will fear him. My sister, look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Something is leaving you. This is what I'm seeing. For you and for your family members. Let that devil never return to you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is in 
I'm hearing a name, Agnes. Prophecy takes a lot of time. So we'll just minimize it so that I'm hearing the name Agnes. 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 I'm hearing that name. Please very quickly because I want to take our time and God is visiting three families at Overflow 2. Overflow 2, the overflow by the roadside. I just saw an anointing, just like fire. Three families, three families by the Spirit of the Living God. Agnes, who is Agnes? You are Agnes. You are Agnes, your sister. No, you are not here for your sister. You are here for yourself. Come. Hi. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, this spirit must let you go. There is a very violent spirit that, that is attempting to take advantage of this lady's life. I declare now by the spirit of God, the covenant and the ordinance that authorizes you in the life of this lady comes under judgment now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that violent devil must let you go now even by the spirit of the there is no hiding place in the name of Jesus there is no hiding place for the unfruitful works of darkness I curse you by the God of heaven and I declare you must let her go alongside everything you have planted in her life in the name of Jesus Christ just hold that there I'm going to hold your hand. It's a strange mystery. I'm going to hold your hand, but the person who will fall is on this road. Bring the person for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, just don't worry, leave the baby. The person who will fall is not this lady. It's on this road, like this, this road right to the back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of the living God, that everything that does not name the name of Christ right now I command it must go in the name of Jesus Christ it must go by the grace of God I set you free my dear in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father there is please don't be embarrassed we may not prophesy to everyone but there is a woman here don't be embarrassed you just had a miscarriage usually i would not ask you to come but the lord is asking to come out who is that person please There is a Yoruba family that is under a very strange attack. Under a strange attack. I'm praying right now. I don't know where they are, but I'm going to pray for you by the Spirit. Please don't confuse the cases so that I can minister to them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that family. It's a Yoruba family from Kwara State. Yoruba family from Kwara State. I'm seeing it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. That family is here or anyone who represents that family I declare freedom right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear 
that everything that is not the planting of the Lord, the hand of God is upon you. And the Lord is saying in the seasons that come, you are going to start having visitations. There is a visitation that God is bringing. And that visitation is preparing you for where he is taking you to. And the Lord is saying that you'll be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you step into that level and that dimension. You are the woman with the miscarriage. You are married. Please don't feel, I hope you are not embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, huh? Because that's the same way you will come here and testify. Listen, God is not going to embarrass you for nothing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. This is one big family and we're intelligent people. We will never come and just embarrass someone like that. If there's anything that looks embarrassing, just know that these things um, are spiritual. My dear, that young lady, go in. Come, lift your hands. God is not done with you yet. Huh? This is, this is, you would have left this girl now. She would have probably just gone like that. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, take what you put in her dream life. Let it live now. Take what you put inside her through the dream. Miscarriage. Please don't feel embarrassed. This is a family. Did I pray for you? Did I pray for you? It's all right. If I prayed for you, just go back. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I agree with you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go and return with your child according to the time of life. No more miscarriage whatsoever. In the name of Jesus, you will return with child according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, please place your hand. In the name of Jesus, return with child. Return with child. In the name of Jesus. There is someone here, you are in ministry. I've not done the impartation yet, but I'm seeing an anointing come on you. And this is for your ministry. There is a level of expansion that you have been praying for. And God is about to answer that prayer. I stretch my hands. I don't know where that person is. But in the name that is above all names, may that anointing, like a mighty rushing wind, in the name of Jesus. There's someone here, God, this night, is giving you a ministry to teenagers. An anointing is coming on you, your ministry will be to teenagers. I don't know where that person is, but Lord, I stretch my hands. Right now, may that man to find the person. In the name of Jesus, I birth that ministry by the Spirit. I birth that ministry by the hand of God. Inside here, outside, I declare, in the name of Jesus, let there be a birthing. I draw from the bowels of prophecy and I declare that ministry is better tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your sister and you, why is she here? Miscarriage? Are you married? You're sure? In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I agree with you. Every plague of miscarriage goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your sister, where is she? Abuja. Tell her that she was prayed for and she should expect a miracle. In the name of Jesus, I declare. You're standing in for her, but I declare the power of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are four people who are receiving the mantle for prayer and intercession. No, I know that it's, it's, a, it's a grace we will all desire, but there are four exact people. Four exact people. Some inside, some outside. Lord, I don't know where they are, but that grace, a dimension of the intercessory ministry, capacity to travail by the Spirit, In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Why is she here? Come. Where are you from? Kaduna, how long have you been married? Last year. Last year. Madam, you came out here for miscarriage, but what God is dealing with is more than miscarriage, huh? We'll pray for you. Where's your husband? Because I'm seeing him here. Is he here? Where is he? Husband, please come. Is the man here? How are you, my friend? Stand up. God is about to change your life. I don't know you. What do you do, sir? Um, Where? I'm up in Kaduna. Kaduna. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? I'm from Ogusu. There is a grace. Please hear me. What? What? Where do you work? Um, I work with the lion. There are two things I'm seeing. One, I'm seeing real estate. Number two, I'm seeing distribution. Distribution of things. Go and write them down and pray over them. This is where your money is. This is where the grace of God. If you hear what I'm telling you. You see, sometimes God will not violate your will. You can choose to do anything you do. But because of the openness of your heart, he will give you direction. The Lord is my shepherd, he says, I shall not want. So when God directs you, he will take away want and lack from you. And that's why I said this is more than just the issue of barrenness or whatever it is. Huh? We'll pray for you. And madam, I want to stop the dreams. Dreams. Huh? I have to pray for you. Sometimes you don't share them. But there are dreams that are oppressions. A lot of oppressions. I want to pray for you. This will end in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sir. This is July, August, September. By October, write it down. Your life will change. Do you know what just entered you? You didn't just fall under the anointing. You see, my, my brother, the realm of the spirit, what is on you is what controls what is around you. Don't worry, I'm going to pray for you. It's the grace for favor that came on you. Amen. And I declare and I prophesy over you by the Spirit of God. These three months, may your life change in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, put your hand in your, on your stomach. According to the time of life, huh? in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing something like a rope being loosed from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you will come with your wife and stand here. Look at their faces and remember them. So that the day they come and stand, it's, it's not to glorify a man. It is to show that God, oh, God is still alive. Huh? I lose this in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will return with a strange miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sir, can I talk to you please? This man. Yes, sir. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. I don't know you. Is it alright if I pray for you? I want to pray for you. Three things. Number one, I want to pray that sickness will not take you to the grave. Amen. I'm not a prophet of doom. This is our, our prophet. I want to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, I want to pray for you that everything that is yours that has not been released, let it come to you. Does it make sense what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. I will pray for you. This is one of the reasons why you are here. I want to pray. It will surprise you the way God will release all kinds of financial blessings to come to you. And then number three, there is a man from Lagos that God is going to connect you with. God is going to use that man to turn your life around. I don't know what you do, but please, I want you to mark this. But the most important prophecy is sickness. 
I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that this thing is an attack. It will start one morning. You just stand up and they will say you are behaving as if you are talking to yourself and you are having memory loss. It's of the devil we must pray. Madam, come. God is about to change your life because you are praying and you are saying God should tell me to speak to you. Is that true? Yes, sir. Stand here. I'm, I'm standing here and I'm hearing your prayer. Yes, sir. And you are saying the Lord should, that should visit yes, you, that you did not come from far for yes, nothing. Sir. Where did you come from? Come. Where are the other two people? We look to Yahweh. congratulate you in the name of Jesus because your life will change in a very remarkable way madam I want to pray for you look at me stand up my friend why by the life here who is sick madam I want to pray for you you see, ba, when prophecy is used well, I'm seeing this woman, your right breast. Huh? If I don't pray for you, yeah. you're going to start having what looks like a growth. <laughs> and it will later become cancer. Because uh, I'm looking at this woman. Jesus. No, don't worry, madam. I'm, don't be afraid. I'm looking at this woman on the bed and just whine. And they say, what is this? What happened to this woman? Jesus. Madam. You did not leave Adamawa State to come here to waste your time. Yes, no. Sir. I vowed a vow and prayed a prayer that never should there be a time when I will have the opportunity to minister and the people say, oh, it was just like before. Never, 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 never. That everyone encounter will leave a deposit of God in your life. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to pray for you. He's, where is he coming from? Adamawa too. I need to pray. There is bad luck in your life. Come, you are a very nice man, but please stand up. Please stand up. I don't cry. Oh, yeah. oh dear. You see, but let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are carrying pain. Oh, you just see people laugh and praise the Lord. That that is a dance of faith. It's just a, a joy of faith because I'm looking at this man. You will not believe what this man has gone through. Is that true? What do you do, sir? I'm a launderer. Washing with his hand. Yes. This is what I'm saying. This man, Kai, oh dear. This man is supposed to be connected to a politician in Adamawa State. This is this man's destiny based on what the Lord is showing me. His name is Zachariah. His name is Zachariah. Yes, he's the presenting minister. This is what I'm telling you. Just listen. Let me prophesy to you. I'm seeing that this man's destiny is supposed to be with a member and yet he's doing, now I'm not saying laundry is an insult, but the way he's doing it, this is not a blessing. Um, I don't know what happened. We had a good relationship and just of a sudden, he changed. He changed. No, he did not change. Somebody told him Huh? that they can use you to kill him. And that he has, it's not only you, I'm not a pro, don't go around fighting anybody, huh? that this man one day will kill him. They were saying, honorable Kayankali, be careful. Don't allow people to just come around you like that who already know you because the enemy within is outside. That's why he lost relationship with you and cut everything away. You see, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God reveals this thing to tell you, this world we live in is not a playground. If you don't sustain spiritual intelligence, look at how, may your enemies not get to the gates before you. Yeah. 
that the counsel of Ahitophel can turn a man's destiny. And this man, it's not that he's using a laundry to washing clothes like, a, like an animal. Sir, you have come here for God to change your life. And I'm praying for you by the God of heaven, the one who put this miracle service together. Let things change now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare favor upon your life. Let things turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? English house, I speak anyone. <laughs> Divide visitation in every area of my family. I will pray for I you. I want male children. <laughs> oh, healing. You have female children. I have two. And you but want I a male. Allergies. Yes, I need male children. That's what, uh, there's a reason why I shifted the mic. I don't want you to say what you're about to say loud, huh? Because one day your husband will be changed and he will hear this, this miracle service message. It's true. I want to pray for you. You see, please let me advise us. It's God that gives children. And, and I don't mean to insult anyone, but please, let's be careful. This issue of give me male children, give me female children, Otherwise, you are not this. I mean, it's even better to come to a man of God to pray for you than to antagonize your wife or husband. There is a culture of the kingdom. Listen, when we get born again, the values, the value system of the kingdom, the spirit life must be at work in us. In as much as I know sincerely that it is beneficial to have children, male and female, when our people are getting married, I pray for them that God will give them children, male and female. But you cannot antagonize your wife or your husband and say, give me um, male children, female children. Of course, I understand. I'm, I'm an African. Because of issues of inheritance and other things, but we have to be careful. Whatever God has not given you, you cannot have it. And if you go to the devil to have it, let me tell you, the consequence will be waiting for you. Are we together? Madam. Look at me. Do you believe if I pray for you, yes, you will come here with a male child? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do. I, I do intend to. Madam, what did you see me doing for you in a dream? Sir, you declare he lives upon my life and you say it is done. Listen, number one, number one, yes, God is bringing favor to your yes, life. Sir. Number two, you will stand on this very altar with a male child. I want you to believe it. You believe that? Hold my hands. Father, please turn the life of this woman in the name of Jesus. Let it please you to open her womb and give her a male child. And we agree, we receive that your husband is born again and he's walking in the ways of God. In the name of Jesus. Madam, the Lord is going to connect you with some, a woman from Maiduguri. Where are you from? I'm from Adama. We have changed. She's my okay. Sister. I'm going to pray for you. A, a woman, she does textile and clothing. Kaya cloth. This woman will bless you in a way that it will look like it's a charm. Yeah. Believe what I'm telling you. Father, I decree and declare, surprise these people by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bless you. God changes your life in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Mama, that mama with blue, come. Who came from Kano? From where? From Air Force Base. Air Force Base. This is your husband. What do you want God to do for him? Don't cry. You know, I preached a message here and I said, God can do it, Abby, madam. Mm. Since 2005, no child. No mercies again. Everything has gone. Madam, stand up. Please, if you are in ministry here, hear me. Reduce your public life. Go back to the secret place. 
and get real power. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Genuine grace. Let me repeat it, please. If you are in ministry, I say this, please. Reduce public life. Watching football. Going for marriages that you don't have any business. I'm not saying you should not honor people. But the times that we are living in now, the problems on people is not just sermons. People are in real trouble. We must trust God for grace to stay in the spirit until you get something genuine that can solve people's problems. 2005, how many years is that? 14 years. No child. Her period ceased completely. The devil sat on it. Let me see how you will have a child. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You can see. How will you be sitting there and then God will just call you. I want to pray for you. Madam, please hear me. I'm saying it in the open. I didn't say it in your ears. I want you to go and prepare. Huh? I'm seeing... Where is your husband? Anybody who wants to come and destroy your family by giving you something to drink, eh? In the name of Temeko, I, I, I banish them far. You hear what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a man, I'm not, please, I love the body of Christ, but I'm seeing someone come, supposedly a prophet, but what this man is doing is not prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What now? I'm, I'm the only one. Six here. months. Yes. He has gone away. He, he just, I, I went to his office to tell him that I'm coming to Zaria today. So he now said, uh, he, he, now, I, he just looked at me. You are not divorced, <laughs> but he has just gone. He, he just went, but you're not divorced. Uh, he's saying uh, where, they are, where they are drinking this thing, so he just left me. He may not, don't, don't be too quick to judge the man. See, let me tell you this. You see, Ba, when people go through things, be careful. When you are about to cross people and call them evil and call them this, remember that stability is according to the measure of your understanding of who God is. And there are times that even the strong get pushed to the wall. So don't be too quick. We are people of love. Don't come here and start thinking and saying, especially if you know the woman and think the husband is this. Mm -mm. We are not here to show who is right or who is wrong. We are here to show that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? Madam, hold my hands. I command this spirit in the name that is above all names to release your womb in the name of Jesus. Madam, I speak to you. First, may God reconcile you back to your husband. Second, you will take in according to the time of life. Your baby will stay and you will return back to the child. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every orchestration that is not of God to keep you barren and to destroy your marriage, I curse it now in Jesus' name. See, anyone here I'm, I'm praying for the ladies now, then we'll pray for the sick. We have to be fast. But no, you don't have to come out. But you are here, the moment you start a relationship with a guy, he becomes serious. And just when he's deciding to do anything marriage, it must scatter. You continue to enter relationships, relationships, re loving and unloving, loving and unloving. Today you are in love, tomorrow nonsense manufactures itself I'm praying right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's a yoke that must be destroyed I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit inside and outside anyone who is under that category by the God of heaven let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity let the power of God come on you now to end that captivity You see, please give this woman her photo, that woman under the anointing. We have to pray. Um, the Lord is asking me, we are praying. I, I hope I'm not boring you. I'm not wasting your time. The Lord is showing me a family here. I may not ask you to come out, but in this family, 
you never settle maritally, but you will have children. No matter how you go around it, you find out that you have children out of marriage, out of, and, and it's not like the men will be there to take responsibility and take care of the children. The Lord wants to deliver that family right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah. Why is she coming? Why is she coming out? The, the family is, she just came out on her own. No, don't worry. Well, she's, she's, she's crying because of her pain. It's possible she's part of that family. But I'm going to pray. Whether you know it or not, you see the thing about the anointing I told you, sometimes God locates people distinctly just to talk to them, to encourage and build their faith. But it doesn't matter where you are. I want to pray now that, that you cannot get married happily with a ring and settle down and have children. But the devil will manipulate that you will continue to have children. I pray right now. I don't know where they are. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Shabakatoka Kiskabaranda Gadosha Lakata, Emprato Sebakatoshiata, we declare that that yoke is destroyed now. We declare that that yoke is destroyed now. That yoke is destroyed now. My dear, look at me. Come. It's your season of laughter. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. You see, let me tell you, for all the pain that you've gone through, I want you to hear me. God himself is turning your life around. Because let me remind you, even as he has reminded you that it pays to serve Jesus. Sometimes you will look foolish while you are doing it. Let me encourage someone here. It pays to serve Jesus. It may not look like he will come every day, but the day he comes, he will come with dignity and honor. And lift you in a way that whoever has laughed at you will have to bend their head in shame. I'm praying for you. Hold my hands. Father, in Jesus' name, confirm your word. You have said that it's a season of laughter. I call it so and I declare that everything that stands as a blockade to your joy and laughter leaves your way now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone will run out under the anointing. Hold the person and bring the person out. That will be the last prophecy. The power of God is coming on someone. It's not something you can control. By the anointing, you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Please, when that happens, bring the person. I need to speak to the person and then we'll pray for the sick right now. It's a very strange anointing and you will find yourself rushing out by the Spirit. Meanwhile, let this lady come. My dear, hold my hand. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it end now. In the name of Jesus. I'm rebuking something you don't know anything about. But in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it goes now over by the grace of God. There are two ladies here. Only married men look for you. A, a responsible, godly gentleman will never seem to be interested in you. But when you find a married man, sometimes with children, that's the one that will come to you. I'm praying. I know there may be many people, but these are two people in the name that is above all names. I declare right now, whatever is on you that continues to compel married men, kapoush kalibra atasubati katea, garu sekete barato shadekata, Shaproske paru kapa, embregete shali karuska baruta, emprakato segata. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit now. I curse something is burning here. I curse that spirit now. I curse that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be embarrassed, but I see the spirit of lust on this lady. I stretch my hands. Let that devil leave you now. 
that a man cannot come and pass this lady quietly and successfully. There's something that must continue to draw in the name of Jesus. By the spirit of the living God, I cause that spirit and I declare it must let you go now. It must release you now. By the God of heaven, I declare, be free from that spirit right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick. Our time is gone, but we have to do this very fast. And like I said, please, please listen. All the people who will be praying for you, I just want you to believe. Um, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three. If you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, please not standing for anybody. And aside from those who are prayed for, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, then join the prayer line here. I want to pray for you myself. Just the fruit of the womb. Are we together? Now, of course, all who are here, you can come for your normal prayer. But particularly, if you, are, if you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, this, this fruit of the womb issue is becoming a serious issue. And we need to deal with it once and for all. Now, we are going to do this fast. All the people ministering to you will do it very, very fast and pray for you. While you are doing that, please, how many of us came with our prayer requests? For those of us who are visitors, there's still room for you. You can quickly pen down your request and wave it. Ushers will be moving around to collect PR. Please help them. And let's just make this very fast and make this snappy. But overflow one, um, overflow two, overflow three. And then the overflow from the building right to second equa and down. Let's call that overflow four. Okay, okay, there is, there is overflow 2B, then there is overflow 4. Please listen, this is overflow 1, this is overflow 2, there is overflow 2B from this place right to the roadside, second equa down, then there's overflow 4, just from the gate of overflow 3, then we have overflow 3 in the main building, and then online. Please make your way, come out and stand according to those various overflows, there will be people there to minister to you right now. We'll do it very fast. Our time is gone. Please submit your prayer request. I'll be laying hands on all of them here right now. You can just wave them. There will be someone by your side. We apologize for those of you standing because your seats were foiled. You would soon have it back and then be back to your seat. If there are visitors, some of you who are members, clear the way for them. They can sit down temporarily, please. If you are here, you are part of us. You can allow them to sit on your seat pending when their seats will be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you for your patience. 
stretch your hands to this request. Please, if there are still requests um, that are not here, let's have them here very quickly so that we can pray. Please understand that this is not a ritual. God really answers prayers. There is a God in heaven who is in this service. This is a prophetic representation of our pain, our expectations. There may not be time to speak to everyone. There may not be time to minister to everyone as we would want to. But then I want us to agree right now. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in the spirit. As I lay my hands upon this request, we are declaring that every request here must be turned into a testimony. Stretch your hands and believe. We are declaring God is answering prayers now. Hallelujah. I stand upon with my bare foot on this prayer request and I declare by the Spirit of God. Even as God has instructed me, I declare that every request here by the Spirit of grace, let it be turned into your testimony. That in the name of that is above all names. There are, hold on please. There are people here, this is a death sentence. There are people here, this is an impossible situation. There are people here, God will, the person God will talk to is far. But I pray, what looks impossible, I bow my knees to the God of heaven, the one who honors me when I pray. And I convert every request here to a testimony this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living Lord. I decree and I declare by the spirit of faith that by this time next month you return here rejoicing. the devil lie to you and say it will be as it has always been. Uh-uh. 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 Every anointing that must be released towards your direction for this prayer to be answered, we release it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every pattern that is not just an individual but is a pattern that is written here as God is visiting you here every other person connected to you whose request you have written here we command a miracle for them where they are in the name of Jesus Christ There are situations here that need the blood. I declare by the mystery of the blood. There are three that bear witness in the heavens. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the name of the Lord God of heaven, by the mystery of the blood of the eternal covenant, we cancel every ordinance that sponsors continuity of this request. In the name of Jesus, And the king could not sleep in the night. And he said, bring me the chronicles. And he saw there written what Mordecai did. Whoever must remember you for this request to be granted. By the God of heaven, we open the book of remembrance tonight. Any man 
man holding what belongs to you, which is the reason why you are writing anything here, we put pressure on them to release it now. Every family here webbed in shame and reproach. It looks like there is no dignity. The speakings of God does not seem to find expression here. I agree with you tonight by the God of heaven. Please help those under the anointing. That by the power of the Holy Ghost, shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Shame and reproach ends this night. Therefore, I decree and declare that these Egyptians you have dropped here, by the God of heaven, may you see them no more forever. May you see them no more forever. The same way I stand upon this request, I command that you stand upon every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I speak over your life. The doors that have followed you here closed. In the name of Jesus, please believe. Let your, don't be distracted. Focus on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I command those doors be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Every grounded ministry here every grounded business every grounded family hear the word of the lord i command and i declare come back to life come back to life come back to life come back to life every helper assigned from god who has not yet paid attention to you and what you request I stand by the God of heaven and in the name of Jesus, I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matters. I compel them to attend to your matters. Everything that should have happened and has not yet happened, according to the program of God you know you should have entered that level and you are not there by prophecy I push you to that level by prophecy I push you to that level listen you see let me tell you what I'm doing I'm not just speaking I'm placing something upon your life you may not see it but you leave this place and watch what happens to you then you will see things turn around let me pray for you the kind of favor that must bring acceleration to your life. Please receive this one. In the name that is above all names, may that mantle like a cloak, Zakata Pakatos, the Breketos Kaparuta, a Brekete Kotosho Pakata, Kratosho Teskaparata. Take favor, take favor, carry favor, carry favor in the name of Jesus. Every area you have struggled in your life, you have done what you know to do. In the name of Jesus, I declare that that struggle comes to end now. Now please listen. The anointing your destiny needs for this season. Please listen. Every season has a grace requirement. Every season. There are doors that don't just open because you stand in front of them. Yesterday's anointing will not move you to tomorrow's place. I pray for you. This is an impartation. Wherever you are, I declare like the dew of heaven, the kind of grace you must carry for this season. Let it land on your destiny now. By this anointing, I forbid you from being ignored. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I forbid you from being ignored. I forbid you from being trivialized. No man will look down on you. They came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. The things that must be done through your hands in this season, for it to be said, this is the Lord's doing. As you are lifting your hands, may a fresh unction from heaven come upon those hands for exploits. Anyone in ministry here, I declare over you, go back to your various assemblies and platforms. Let there be fire on your altar. Fire on your altar. Fire on the ministration. Let the gifts of the spirit work powerfully. In the name of Jesus. We're rounding up. Let's pray over our finances. This issue of finance is bringing many people to their knees. Bringing many families to their knees. Distracting people. The time we should spend on the things of the kingdom. We are focusing on money, what to eat, what to wear, house rent, building projects. It is not the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, the helper of men, I declare this month, even beginning from today, Receive strange financial help. Receive strange financial help. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, strange financial help. Everyone under the sound of my voice, trusting God for an honorable job. Listen, there are jobs that don't have honor. They are time wasters. They are devourers. I pray for you. The kind of job that represents dignity that will honor you and help you to build your home well may the God of heaven give you such a job let me pray for your spiritual life if you have cars you have houses and your spiritual life is not on fire you are not doing well the first index to measure prosperity in the kingdom is the health of your spiritual life that your prayer life fire word life fire fellowship with the spirit fire no room for up today down tomorrow i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life fresh fire upon your prayer life, your prayer life. every lukewarmness slumber Glutony, these spirits that destroy your spiritual fervency, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive victory over them. The grace that can keep a man in the presence of God, the, the staying power that you can stay with the word, stay in prayer, not rush in and rush out, and one power God is not a magician I pray for you the unction to stay receive it in the name of Jesus every dimension in the spirit that is supposed to have been activated there are some of you now listen there are levels of graces you should have left sincerely there are dimensions of power. There are haziness. Certain dimensions of haziness in your spiritual perception. There is a level of authority. There is an office you should be sitting on now. But it's not yet there. I pray for you. The mantle that will shift you to that level. May that grace come upon you now. The mantle that will shift you to that level. Makatoska barakato. May that grace come upon you now.
Listen. Everything in your life that has refused to grow. God gave you a ministry that has refused to grow. No membership, nobody is placing a demand on your grace. God gave you a business, it has refused to grow. No increase, no impact. Anything that is alive grows. Whatever has stopped growth in your life, I bring that thing to an end now. Finally, let me pray, please. The spirit of infirmity. I told you that this is, this is, I came to pray and rebuke that spirit. Because that spirit, like the angel of death, is moving over families, attacking children, attacking all kinds of people. Headache will just kill a man for nothing. Kata, and they will say it's cancer. Pain around your breast. They will say you have a malignant, a tumor. See, let me tell you, whatever you don't fight to victory will remain in your life. Challenges are not the issue, but that you stand and fight the good fight of faith until you see what God said. If you have not seen what God said, don't stop. I pray for you. The spirit of a warrior, the grace that will cause you to refuse to allow things that are not the will of God. May that grace rest upon you now. As a body of believers, we agree that the spirit of infirmity first over this family, number two over this territory, and number three over the body of Christ. Thou spirit of infirmity, we banish your operation now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted at noonday the spirit of death if there is anyone here that death is looming around the corridors of your life or your loved ones or those connected to you spiritually and by bloodline I declare let death lose its grip over you now Receive the last prayer that I pray for you to end this miracle service. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Please listen. Honor is a real grace. You can do everything to bring honor and yet honor will not come. Honor is not about usurping authority over people. There is a real grace. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. The kind of honor that needs to distinguish you for the sake of the kingdom in this season. May that grace and may that honor rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands everywhere and give Jesus praise. Mighty God. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we thank you. By the wave offering we receive. We receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. Please let me say this. Let there be no movements till we are done. Every time we are almost done, many of you cancel out everything God has done through disobedience. Just give me two minutes and then we must leave. There are people here who are yet to truly surrender their life. Please keep standing. We believe in soul winning. And in reality, we believe that it is the greatest miracle. There are people here who came to this place confused, looking for Jesus sincerely. Religion refused to give you. Sometimes we men of God disappointed you but you are still looking for Jesus. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, 
I love Jesus, but the way my life is right now, I need help. Now, whatever, whether you are inside, outside, we have two minutes for you. Please, win that war this night. Don't sit down dilly-dally. You know that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, inside, outside, I don't want you to be ashamed. Aside from overflow 3, overflow 2B, and overflow floor, you can just move to your various projector screens. But you are here. Quickly, I'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and stand here right now. Quickly. I don't expect you to be thinking about it. Keep standing. It's something you should know. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. Don't let any friend hold your hand and say, don't embarrass yourself. Don't let any relative keep you bound. Our time is gone, but your salvation is important. Keep coming. Keep coming. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. Win that war and come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. If you are not sure, make your way and come quickly. Apostle, I'm a leader in my fellowship. Join them quickly. We have one more minute, please. Those coming from outside, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those online following from whatever nation, doesn't matter. Once you are following and you can hear my voice, listen to me, please. Believers, listen. It is important. That we never lose out on soul winning. Let me say this. It is not just an evangelical agenda. It is not an orthodox agenda. It is not a man of God agenda. It is the only way men come to this kingdom. No matter what we do. Please you are a man of God here. Hear me. Don't be careless over soul winning. It is important that people be given an opportunity. Except you don't know what salvation is. If you really understand what the new birth is. You will desire even your enemy to be saved. It is the only gateway. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Salvation is a giver's gift to you. You receive. I salute all of you who have come here. Some of you are standing here rededicating your lives. Some of you are not even sure what you are doing honestly. Some of you are here genuinely for the first time. It doesn't matter. You see, the thing about the love of God is that the moment you call on his mercy, he will act as though he's not seeing what is wrong with you again. The mercy of God is powerful. Religion is what drives people away from God. Lift your right hand. Those around the various overflows, join them. Please say after me, sincerely. Jesus is in this place. You are not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. This night, I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that according to Scripture, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I'm not only heaven bound, but I reign in life. I receive of the Holy Spirit from today. I declare and forever that I'm a child of God. Amen. I declare over you by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven the Lord himself is granting you a new beginning. I pray that you will know the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a new and a fresh way. I pray for you that you will know the anointing in a mighty way. For many of you who are standing here, may God use you to become mighty men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with hunger for spiritual things. I bless you with passion for the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. A big congratulations. Now, please, I want all of you 
alongside um, those at the various overflows, there should be someone waving his or her hands. Please, I'd like you to follow them very quickly, and there will be a group of people who will address you. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. Now, our time is gone, but um, please listen. We're about to take the announcements. Welcome the first timers, and we're done. I sincerely apologize. Pray for us by God's grace. I know that God will grant us the grace. We'll soon have our place and we'll reschedule our services to allow us finish on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I, I, know, I welcome everybody. We're going to welcome the first timers now. But particularly, I just want to honor a few people. First, I want to bless our precious people, the delegates from... Um, the king's court and the oasis. God bless you. Hallelujah. The redeemed Christian church of God. That's, um, that's the church that Nathaniel Bassi pastors. God bless you. Thank you. There are a group of people here, adorable people. These people take, they take care of me so much every time we have a meeting around their place. And um, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. I want us to honor the pastor from Ukraine. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you very much. And um, now I know there are so many people. Please don't find offense. It's by no way belittling you. Every We believe the law of honor is one of our foundational um, values, our pillars here. I just felt I am indebted to some of the people that are connected to these ones. And so I just wanted to to do that honor and i think i hope i'm right yes it should be him um i saw elisha maman somewhere he just squeezed himself that's him may god bless you very humble and very great man i love you may the lord bless you in the name of jesus every other person who has come here especially for those of you who came from so very far um aside from those that i called within a few minutes i will request that you come um, and stand here so that we will honor you. We believe in honor. And I know that in many churches, they have different ways of receiving people, but we don't fake things and we don't pretend things here. When we call you out to honor you, we really mean it. It's not some Christian stage managed acting, no. Genuinely, sincerely. So wherever you are, aside from... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.